a beautiful day at our church today, a beautiful day at your house. Would you come pray? Would you come sing? Won't you join our hope group? It's Father Forty's neighborhood, a land of church and family love. Won't you come and pray with me? Come and pray. It's Father Forty's neighborhood, so much to learn, so much to do. Won't you come and pray with me? Come and pray. I've got lots of friends for you to meet. In this hope group you will see a friendly face for you to see just waiting to teach you. It's a beautiful day at our church today, a beautiful day at your house. Father Forty's neighborhood. Hello everyone, welcome to our hope group. Today our special topic is St. Nicholas. St. Nicholas is one of the most beloved and well-known saints of the church of all time. He lived a very long time ago. He lived in the middle part of the third century and died in the beginning part of the fourth century. So he died roughly around the year 330. He was born into a very wealthy family. His parents were Theophanes and Nona. And unfortunately, they died and St. Nicholas inherited all of their wealth, and he gave every penny away to the poor. St. Nicholas had an uncle whose name was also Nicholas, and also, by the way, is a saint of the church too. But St. Nicholas entered into the monastery that was established by his uncle and became a monk. He then later traveled to Jerusalem where he wanted to remain a monk there wanting to live his life in prayer. And the interesting thing is that this may seem very strange to us, you know, someone wanting to leave and the world and enter a monastery. But if we ever visit monasteries, and I encourage you to visit, is that you will see that they live in a community, a very beautiful brotherhood or sisterhood, supporting one another through, through prayer and through service to each other and that they live as one big family. So St. Nicholas had gone to Jerusalem, but God reached out to him and said, I want you to return back to where you are from. And there, I want you to serve my people if you want to receive a crown from me. So St. Nicholas returned and went back to what we know today as Southwestern Turkey. Now, interestingly enough, shortly after he came back home, he had a dream. And in this dream, Jesus and the Virgin Mary appeared to him. And Jesus was just holding a gospel book, and the Virgin Mary was holding an omorphodion. An omorphodion is that special vestment that bishops wear that goes down, up, and around their, their neck and down to the other side. And so the Virgin Mary was holding the omorphodion, and they announced to him that he was going to become a bishop of the church. He had no idea how this was going to take place, but sure enough, soon after he was elected, he became the bishop of Myra in Lycia. As a bishop, he then spent all of his time taking care of his flock, taking care of all the people that were in the area where he lived. He loved them. And he would take care of their needs. If someone needed something, he would find a way. Oftentimes, we hear of stories where St. Nicholas would mysteriously throw bags of gold into the windows of the people who really needed help. And they would discover this bag of gold having come through the window and have no idea how it got there. Well, it was St. Nicholas who had done it. So St. Nicholas became well-known all throughout the world as someone who loved people, someone who took care of them, and gave them gifts. And so today, we remember St. Nicholas as Santa Claus. Well, St. Nicholas was also a big defender of truth in the Orthodox faith. And at the First Ecumenical Council, St. Nicholas had heard Arius say, not some good things about Jesus. When I say not some good things, that Arius was saying that Jesus is greater than man, 
but less than God. So he's greater than a regular human being, but he's less than God. But the church has always stated that Jesus Christ is 100% man, 100% God. And so St. Nicholas, in defending the truth of the church and of God, struck Arius on the cheek. And so St. Nicholas was put into prison because he had struck another bishop. And while in prison, it was Jesus again and the Virgin Mary who went to visit St. Nicholas. And Jesus asked St. Nicholas, he said, Nicholas, why are you here in prison? And St. Nicholas said, it's because I love you, Lord. Well, interesting that Jesus and the Virgin Mary then appeared to several bishops who were at that ecumenical council, and they told them, you've made a big mistake in putting Nicholas into jail because Nicholas did nothing wrong. He was defending me. So this is indeed a very great mystery. You see, when St. Nicholas struck Arius, he did it without any sin. I can't imagine doing that. In other words, St. Nicholas was so pure that he did it completely out of his love for God that he struck Arius. It's amazing. This is the kind of person St. Nicholas is, that he, his modus would be so great and pure. I never recommend hitting another person ever, 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 ever. But St. Nicholas did this out of defending God. So what happened? St. Nicholas was let out of jail and brought back to the council. Amazing. St. Nicholas has been known all throughout the world to anyone who calls upon him for need, whether it be at, at home or even at sea. St. Nicholas is the patron saint of airline captains and sea captains because he has been known to rescue people from waters. He has been known to help people even today. And I can tell you, he even helped me and my family find a house many years ago. St. Nicholas truly is the victory of the people, which is really what Nikolaos means, the victor or the victory of the people, because he is our champion. He loves God. And we go to him, we ask him for help, and then he prays to God, and miracles happen. We see it even today. So I wish all of you who are named Nicholas or Nicole or any variation thereof, uh, many, many years, Kronia Pala, for just having celebrated your name day. And may St. Nicholas always be close to us and to our hearts and be there to help us always. God bless you all. It's a beautiful day at our church today, a beautiful day at your house. Father, Fonty's neighborhood.